But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Let's pray together. Loving and caring God, we thank you all for this day. As we celebrate the wonderful gift of your Holy Spirit upon us, and how we pray that you may continue to minister to us through you, Holy Spirit. And we pray all this brief and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome you all that you may rejoice together in the presence of the Lord and as we listen to him. Our first Bible reading is taken from the book of Psalms 32, and I'm reading from verse 1 to 11. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose Spirit is not deceit. When I get silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. For the day and night, your heart was heavy on me. My strength was sapped and in the heart, as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgive the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bait and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the wolves of the wicked, but the lawns and fading grass surrounds those who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be grand, you righteous, sing all who are upright in heart. Our second Bible reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 5 to 14. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is a hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subjected to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead you also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, 
Brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are read by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Uh, today is a very important day of the church. And today we shall, it's the, what you call the Pentecost Sunday. And we shall be sharing on the reign of the Holy Spirit. I'm saved. I'm sustained by the grace of God. We have read from Psalms 32. And um, it is more much associated with David. And I suppose that David wrote it after he had been forgiven and restored to divine favor. But today I want us to read it much to share about the experience that comes when we are forgiven our sins and we become connected with God. And also starting a new life of relating closely with God. The change of heart and mind and starting a newness of life which cannot happen without the working of the Holy Spirit of God. In most instances, when we are celebrating the Pentecost Sunday, we share much about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But today, I want to focus on the governance of the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit of God takes charge in a forgiven sinner, after we realize, or when the Holy Spirit comes in our lives, first to convict as of our sins and to transform us in newness of life to live according to the will of God. From this psalm, blessed is he whose transgressions transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth no iniquity in whose spirit there is no guile. The psalmist is talking about how wonderful it is for a human soul and mind to reach a point of that intimate relationship when our sins are forgiven and once again we can enjoy that oneness and closeness with God. Blessed 
is he who have, having sinned is forgiven. You are given a new lease of life in terms of our relationship with God. Blessed is he whose sins are covered, whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. This is a very wonderful state of our soul. You go to God with an open heart. When you have already known about your failures and you express them, you are sins and your transgressions and express them to God. God forgives and he gives us a new start. The psalmist says, When I get silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as the heat of summer. The state of remaining in sin, the guilt that comes along with sin. Sin will always cost you more than you had planned to pay or to spend. Sin will make you, will keep you longer than you had planned on staying. Sin will take you further than you had planned to go. It puts us into a state of misery. When sin reigns over us, there is pain. There is loss. And the psalmist had gone through all these pains until he acknowledged his sin. When he did not cover his iniquity, when he presented himself to God confessing his sins, God forgave him and removed the guilt of his sin. He encourages the faithful to seek the Lord where he may be found. He asserts all, in other words, rejoices that he has a hiding somewhere to run to for protection. Then there is a response of God I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. A sinner repents. A sinner is forgiven. And then God offers to instruct so that we do not continuously live in sin. Daily overthrown by the power of sin 
and rebellion against God. And a caution in verse 9. Do not be like the horns or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by beat and bridle, or they will not come to you. In other words, do not be like the horns or mule, which are very hard to train. They are very hard to make them adapt in terms of following you. They have to be controlled by the beat and bridle. He shares of God's unfading love that surrounds those who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all, you who are upright in heart. This is a wonderful condition. And it is a condition of every believer who believes in the sacrifice of our Lord who came and suffered. He went through the death on the cross He overcame death and sin. He resurrected and ascended and is seated on the right hand of the Father. When we believe in the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins. In him, we live in life of liberty. We taste a newness of life. The pain of transgressing against God is dealt with. And you are given a new opportunity to relate closely with God through the Holy Spirit. In a day like this, a day of Pentecost, we are to, we all together can celebrate the reign of the Holy Spirit. In our lives, God having forgiven us, he has given us the Holy Spirit to instruct us and teach us the way we should go, to counsel us, and always having his loving eye upon us. Like it is in Psalms 2 8. I will instruct you. I will teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. That is what the coming of the Holy Spirit means to us. It is meant to the church during the Pentecost. It means to us in our everyday to day life that we have the Holy Spirit of God instructing us 
on the way we should go. We have been forgiven through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Who is this? If it is not to us who believe in Jesus Christ, who believe in the cleansing power of the blood of our Lord, Blessed is the one who sin the Lord does not count against them. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. Who is this? If it is not us who have received forgiveness through Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Spirit of God, we have been given that clear conscience. And we have the confidence to approach the throne of God. For our sins are forgiven. And we are called into newness of life. Through Jesus Christ. In our second reading, from the book of Romans 8, we read from verse 5. Romans 8. But the, uh, in the beginning, just from verse 1, it talks about that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Spirit who gives life has set us free. Free from the law of sin and death. It is us who celebrate. There is no condemnation. We've been counted righteous through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We are set free from our sins. When our Lord Jesus Christ was going back to the Father, in John 16, from verse 13 and 14, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into the truth. For He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. Pentecost, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit of God. While the gifts of the Holy Spirit are wonderful gifts, but the gifts are not in any means, 
more important than the giver. There is a tendency that our minds are more given to think about the gifts more than the giver himself. Realizing the totality of the coming of the Holy Spirit of God is very important. He becomes a governor. There is that full authority. The Holy Spirit exercising sovereign power over our lives. Because we have forgiven our sins, there is something that changes in a Christian life. Initially, seeing the hard authority of our eyes, reigning of our eyes through the raw sin, meaning the sin exercised power of our eyes and controlled power and rule over our lives, which leads to death and destruction. But with the reign of the Holy Spirit in a Christian life, there is a new government in place. The reign of the Holy Spirit of God. And this reign of the Holy Spirit of God is more than gifts or any other thing. The Holy Spirit taking charge and taking control or in the, uh, in the, of the garment of our souls, teaching us the things of the kingdom of God and making the, the will of God being predominant, prevalent in a Christian life. We are not governed by the raw sin. For the raw sin leads to death. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. When we celebrate Pentecost, we celebrate the governance, the reign of the Holy Spirit. That when we believe in Jesus Christ, He sends a governor, an administrator. All the things of the kingdom of God in our eyes. We are guided. We are taught. We are controlled. We do not even know how to please God. We depend on our sins. We believe in Christ. But we have... The Holy Spirit teaching us, instructing us, showing us what pleases God. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. 
It doesn't submit to the law and cannot do so. We recognize how limited we are. When we want to please God, if it is only a human initiative, then what follows is a disaster, inability to fulfill our commitment before God. It is indeed impossible if salvation is our own initiative. If it was about by the power of a human being, it is way or it is too high for us to live in godliness. When we celebrate Pentecost, we celebrate the reign of the Holy Spirit in our souls and our lives, allowing the Holy Spirit to take the governorship of our souls and our lives. The Holy Spirit is the agent of salvation. He is the one who guides us to repentance. He is the one who brings those blessings secured by Christ and makes them a reality to us in our everyday to day life. He interprets the promises of God. Every day we realize who are we in our relationship with God. Realizing our privileges as the sons and the daughters of God, which we would not have known or discovered by our human effort. The Spirit of God applies to the church that which Christ has already accomplished for the church. Every day, he makes a reality of who Christ desires us to be, which we cannot become by our own efforts. So the Holy Spirit when he is reigning in a Christian life, he is an agent of the salvation of God, applying to the church what has already been accomplished by Christ for us. The Holy Spirit is a boarding agent. He is the one who connects us with God. Human being and God. With our flesh. And our human mind. As separated. Human mind is evil. God is holy. We are separated because of our sins. But when the Holy Spirit of God is in us, he becomes a boarding agent. We can know the mind of God. We can relate with God in prayer and his word. He is a fighter, boarding agent. He gives us that he makes, becomes the guru, uniting us with God. He secures us for salvation, and he permanently dwells in us, connecting us to God in every way. 
and interpreting the gospel for us. The Holy Spirit is Christ-centered. He doesn't have a different mention from the ones of our Lord Jesus Christ from John 16, verse 13 and 14. So some, it reads, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, whatever he, hears he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Verse 14. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that you take that which is mine and declare it to you. You can see how the Trinity is connected. The one triune God. The Holy Spirit is executing the mission of the Son and the Son is executing the mission of the Father so that they are not two different or three different missions. The mission of God the mission of the Son and the mission of the Holy Spirit. But, ra but rather, the Holy Spirit is implementing the mission of the Son. And the Son is implementing the mission of the Father. When we say we are under the Holy Spirit, We are in Christ and we are in God. And the Spirit of God is in us. The Holy Spirit is God himself living in us. In the words that we learned from Psalms 32. Verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Once again, do not be like the horse or all the mule, which has no understanding, but must be controlled by beat and bridle, or they will not come to you. A Christian life is a life that is guided by the Holy Spirit of God. Our willingness to follow, our willingness to submit, we always make us grow and understand the way of God. He will glorify me For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The spirit of truth. 
He has the truth. When we get into verse 2 of Romans 8, the Lord of the Spirit of life in Christ has freed us from the law of sin and death. And in Romans 6.14, For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. The Holy Spirit in us gives us a freedom from sin. He reigns in us. He empowers us to say no from the power of sin that dominates the world. When the Holy Spirit is reigning in a Christian life, we have the power, you are given the power that makes us to say no to ungodliness. As I said, as we celebrate the various gifts and abilities that come through the working of the Holy Spirit in us, there is something special to celebrate. How the Holy Spirit governs the life of a believer. And we should always ask ourselves, can this be celebrated in my life? That I have around, I've always given consent, I am submissive to the working of the Holy Spirit of God in my life. The Holy Spirit of God is powerful, but not forceful. He desires us to give him space to operate in our lives and to continue with the mansion of salvation in our lives as believers to make us what we should be as children of God forgiven of all our sins and given and not only given around into the privilege of being instructed by God through the Holy Spirit. And finally, God has given the Holy Spirit to all of us who believe in Him. In Joel 2.28 to 32, And after this I will pour out my Spirit on all kinds of people, your sons and daughters who prophesy, your old men who dream dreams, and your young men who see visions. All the time I pour out my spirit also on male slaves and the female slaves. I will show miracles in the sky and on the earth. Then anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We are given unlimited access to the Holy Spirit of God, unlimited access for the young and the old, for men and women, to the masters and the servants, 
We all have been given a limited access to the Holy Spirit of God. If we access God in repentance by believing in His Son, every God and Son, and allowing God to work through our lives, we've been given a limited access to the Holy Spirit of God. To your sons and your daughters. To men and women. To male servants and female slaves. God has given a limited and limited access. He has around all of us that by believing in His Son, we receive the Holy Spirit that who, is, who tutors us in the things of the kingdom of God. He works beyond our limitations. We are limited as human beings. But God works and overthrows every of our limitations. And allows us to be blessed as a person whose transgressions are forgiven when we are allowed to go through his son. We are instructed through the Holy Spirit and our lives are governed by the Holy Spirit of God. As we celebrate Pentecost, let us celebrate the reign of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we thank you. You've invited us, our Lord, that we may celebrate this day the way that you have given us a new government, the government led by the Holy Spirit who implements the great plans of salvation to us within us, who makes us one because we belong to you and you have your Holy Spirit in us. By having the, your Holy Spirit, we become your sons and your daughters, our Lord. May you help us to submit and yield to the governorship of your Holy Spirit who teaches and who leads us to your holy ways. Our Father, we are not under the governance of the flesh but you are under the governorship of your Holy Spirit. Help us to submit. We thank and worship you, our Lord, as we pray all this brief and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us for today's online service. We appreciate your participation and love. We urge you to continue connecting with us through liking, commenting, and sharing these messages with your family and your friends. Don't forget to subscribe for more and more messages. God bless you.